Hey everybody, welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial series. It's Taken Grace with the next one in the series, which will be the uh, well, last video. We did the item use thing where we can cycle through all of our items. Uh, so we made the array that holds all the inventory items that are, or item slots that are actually filled, and then we can now cycle through them and they update uh, how many we have based on that. But first things first, we're going to, uh, in this video, actually use the items that we uh, have equipped. So we'll make sure that that... Uh, I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's go into our HUD class here, and we're just gonna go into our item management and just find some empty space up here. First thing we'll do, we're gonna create a custom event called use item query. Okay, and uh, so we're, we're gonna, we have to do a couple of checks before we can actually use the item. So that's why we're calling it query. First thing we need to check, uh, if you guys don't have this Boolean, uh, this is the second time I'm doing this tutorial, so I might have just had this made already but if you don't have this boolean just make a boolean called item cooldown active we need to check and see we just need to check and make sure that we're not uh currently in our item cooldowns and if we're not then that means we can use our item just make that go up a little bit we're going to come out of the false branch and then we're going to set our used item slot okay so this needs to have an input of index Boom, integer. Okay, and then it will get plugged into use item slot. So I did bring this up in a previous video. So we have use item slot index and slot item index. So obviously this slot is going to be showing one specific item. So we're gonna, when we use an item uh, from the quick item use slot, we're gonna be uh, telling it to use that particular item. However, when we open our inventory later on, we're going to click on this and we're gonna have a different dialog box pull up. And it's going to say like use item, drop item, whatever. So if you so right now we have the brick equipped. So if I wanted to like eat this apple, if I click and then say use item, then it's going to tell that to use this item and not the brick. So that's why it's important that this particular event has an index so that we can plug in which item we actually need to use, and then we set that as the use index. Okay. So let's get our filled slots. And we're going to get a copy of the particular use item that we're looking for. And then after that, we're going to get our new item and we're going to set it. Okay, so we'll drag that into here. We just want to be able to reference the new item. We're going to break this now or split it. And we're going to get our current quantity and we're going to set current quantity and plug that guy in. The item ID, we're going to just drag down here, type RER data reroute node, and then we're going to drag it out, get data table row, bottom here. Going to get a couple of uh, things from there. So we'll do the item data table. And we'll drag out of here and we'll break this because we need to use the struct as well. So we need to break it instead of splitting it like we normally do. Okay, and this is where we're finally going to use that enum that we made eons ago. It'll be the item type, and we're going to drag out of there, and we're going to do a, a, pardon me, a switch node. Switch on enum type. So now we can run different events based on what type of thing these are. Okay? So we'll do row not found. Pardon me. We'll do row found. Um, and then we're going to come with a potion. And we're going to get a branch. We need to check and see if our health is full. If our health is full, then we don't want to use a potion, obviously, or food. We'll put food in here just in case. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna grab our health bar widget, and then we're going to get process progress health bar. This is one. Get health bar progress, our health bar that is displaying our health, and we're gonna check and see. Let me get percent. We're gonna check and see if our percent equals one. If it equals one. Guess what? We have full health. Boom. Put a comma box around there. Checks. Boom. Okay. All right, next we are going to, if we do have full, or sorry, we do not have full health, then we're going to want to take our current quantity. We're going to get that, and we're going to do minus minus to get a decreased increment, and we're going to want to decrease it by one and set it as the new current, uh, current value, or current quantity. Then we're going to want to set our new item to represent that. So we're going to split that. We're going to plug this in here. 
this item ID, we do need to plug something in or else it's going to set the new item ID as none and that's going to break our game. <laughs> so we're going to get new item, we'll split it, and then we'll just plug in our item ID so that it's the same. All right, finally, we are going to get our player character and we're going to want to gain health. We'll get our health component. So right here, health, this, so this is referencing our health component. So if we just find gain health, um, that is technically what we want, but however, we made a BPI for this, which runs a bunch of other different events. So we need to go up to our BPI health and we need to get player gain health message. Okay. From this guy, we're gonna, well, let me just drag this up just a little bit, a little, little bit ugly, but whatever. Okay, we'll drag this all the way out here and we're gonna break it. We're gonna grab our health and we're gonna drag that in. Okay, so it's gonna get the health of the item and then return that back. All right, now we need to do a new function inside our inventory. Whoop, inventory. New function called remove from inventory. All right, so the remove from inventory, we need a item to remove, which will be a item to remove. It'll be a slot struct or a struct slot item. I can't remember what I call it. S item slot. And then another one for the index. Index. Perfect. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to drag all this, uh, drag this out, and we need to set array element. Actually, you know what? Pardon me, we need to break this. Let's just split this. Can I split it? I can split you. I gotta break this. Now I can split it, there we go. All right, so we're gonna check the quantity. If the quantity equals zero, that means we have no items left. What the heck did I do? Branch. Uh, that means we have no items left and we should actually get rid of this uh, index altogether. So we will get our f content here, get content. We're going to remove index. And then we're gonna plug in our index to here. And then we will go from true into here. Okay, but if we do that, that means that we are removing this index permanently from this array, which means if we have a 24 item inventory slot, we now have a 23 item inventory slot. So what we need to do, drag out a content, resize. Okay, that, and then we'll get this out of the way. And then we'll drag our inventory size and we'll just resize it. So this is just gonna add a new inventory slot at the end of the array. All right, so if this does not equal one, that means that we still have items available. We just want to update the stuff in there. So first we'll need to drag out of here and we need to make S underscore, underscore come on, underscore item slot. And then we need to plug quantity and item into here. And then we'll drag this over there and we need to drag the index, the reroute node here. Keep everything as clean as possible. This is sketchy already. Look at this sketty. Can't handle it. All right, so, and then the target array will be obviously content. So we'll just drag content, just plug it in here. Just to keep it nice and neat. Oh, the sketty. I can't handle it. Anyways, so that's all we need to do for remove. We we'll might as well just, you know, add a return node just to clean it, make it clean. All right, so we'll hit compile. And then we'll go back to our HUD class, and then we need to get our inventory from our player. Get our inventory, and then we need to remove. Oh, I just saw it. Remove from inventory. Item to remove will be new item. Damn it, I had it. I had it. And index will be our use item index. All right. Okay, after we've removed from inventory, we need to refresh our item once again. So we'll call that event because that's inside this blueprint. And now we're gonna do our item cooldown stuff. So we're gonna set item cooldown active as true. We are then gonna do a timeline. 
If you guys are familiar with timelines, it can change vari uh, variables over a certain amount of time. Uh, so we're going to do item cooldown is the name. I'll get into play from start. We're gonna, so right now I'll notice that it just has direction on this. We're gonna double click to open this. We're gonna set the length of our cooldown. This can be whatever, however long you want. So I'm gonna do two seconds. Okay, we'll add a track and we're gonna do a float track. We're gonna right click on this line to add a key to curve and do that twice. Okay, so remember we're doing this for the progress bar in our use item slot or our quick use item slot. So uh, it needs to be between zero and one. So for this, for the time, we're gonna say zero. So it's at the beginning of the timeline and the value is gonna stay as zero. Okay, for this one, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do two or whatever you set your timeline length to be. Uh, so that'll be at the end of the timeline and the value is gonna be one. Okay. Let's uh, just close this right here and then we're gonna go back there and you can see that it says new track. You know what, we can actually name the track here. Rename to percent. There we go, now it looks, you know, not silly. We'll get our quick use item slot now. We're gonna get our item cooldown bar and we're going to set percent. We'll do it out of update so that the percent changes from zero to, to one. Uh, once this timeline finishes, we're gonna want to set item cooldown active to false, and then we can use items again. All right, uh, so that's uh, all the logic we need to do here for using items. Obviously, like later on, we're gonna do a key, and then we're not doing material in this tutorial series, but uh, if you were to use, we just did that to basically fill this out a bit and make it look interesting. Uh, but yeah, if later on, that's where you would do the logic for the material. Okay, so lastly, we need to actually put an input action in for our player, or our, pardon me, our player controller so that we can actually use items. So we're going to go down to the bottom here. We're going to do IA underscore use item. And we're going to come out of the start and we're going to grab our HUD class and we're going to get use item query. The index we need to plug in is gonna also come from our HUD class and we're gonna get our item slot index. And we're gonna plug that in, just like that. Okay, there, that's uh, I think all we need to do. Let's just check and make sure that it works. Let's pick up some items, pick up our potion. So obviously only the healing items are gonna work. So we'll go to our apple, we'll eat it and our cooldown work, but we didn't gain any health for some reason. That was interesting. Meat, same thing, didn't gain any health. So the use functionality is working, the remove slot is working, but uh, we're not gaining any health. Uh, that's uh, very interesting. Let's have a look here. HUD class. So here, we'll do a little debug sesh together so you guys can see how, uh, how I do things. So I'm gonna, well, first off, let's, I'm gonna just window this. So first off, uh, I can't select my HUD class. Where'd it go? It's over here somewhere. I can't select my debug class as the HUD class because it hasn't been created yet. So if I hit play just to simulate it, now I can come over here and select my HUD class as the spawn thing. So we're gonna see what happens here. So I'm gonna pick up a couple things. I'm gonna use a uh, potion and we're just gonna watch on the right to see what uh, lines are being executed. So it looks like everything went through, but I didn't gain any health. So interested. So obviously this, let's uh, put a breakpoint on here. So toggle breakpoint. So now it's gonna stop the code when we run this. And we can check values. So for some reason, there's no value on there. Go back here. Health is 500, so it's it's uh, getting, it should be getting the health. So let's uh, go up here and we're going to step into the next node to be executed. And uh, that's our BPI. So let's go back to our, pardon me, go to our, let's go to our inventory. Let's just stop rec uh, recording, stop, uh, what do you call it? Simulating, we're gonna go to components, health component. Let's just check this. Did we do this all right? Well, we did it all right because we have our... 
So let's toggle breakpoint here and let's go back to our HUD class and let's remove the breakpoint from here. Okay, let's have a look now and see what's changed. Interesting. It's like it's not even firing. Oh, you know what it is? It's coming from our player. Player gain health. It's coming from our player. Our player is not the one with our um, health uh, BPI component and that's why it's not firing anything. We need to get our health component. Sorry, we'll just type health and go to the bottom. Get health. So we want our health component and we want to plug that in there because that's the thing that's actually got the scripting for all this stuff. We'll compile, we'll hit play, and now it should work. There we go. 500 health to gain. There, I gained 500 health. Let's just remove this breakpoint. Let's check our apple and our potion to make sure they work. Potion worked. I'll just take some damage. I can eat some apple. There we go. Okay, there it all works now. So, um, there, that's that, that's basically what I do for our, for debugging. I kind of like pay attention to like what nodes are being executed and uh, what things. And uh, yeah, obviously it was all going through. So, uh, the thing we're having the problem with is gaining health. So, that's why I went straight to player gain health. Um, and then I put a breakpoint there and then I can, you can check values like I, like you saw there just to make sure that there's actual correct values coming in. Uh, and then I saw, obviously I saw that and that's, that's obviously what the problem was. So anyways, I uh, appreciate you guys joining me for this tutorial series. So now we got uh, functioning uh, use item stuff. So now we're going to add some flair in the next video. We're going to finally do our, uh, add our like banners. We're going to add like coming up to the apple. It's going to say pick up apple. And uh, then when you pick up the apple, we're going to have a banner come up on the left hand side that's like you picked up one apple or two apples or whatever the, whatever the case may be. Uh, so yeah, we're going to work on more UI based stuff now. So that's uh, going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait to show you guys that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video and I will hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.